Hello, Erica here. I'm filming just on my MacBook today because I am having issues. Anyway, so I don't know if the quality of this video is going to actually be better or worse than my um, other camera that I usually use because that's nothing fancy either. But I'm here today to do my Bat of Books 15.0 wrap up and also kind of talk about what I'm currently reading. So for those of you who are not aware, Bat of Books took place from January 4th to January 10th. Um, Bad of Books is a really popular readathon. Um, a lot of book bloggers as well as booktubers get involved in it, and it happens a few times a year. And I like to participate. It's kind of a laid back week long readathons where you set your own goals, so there aren't any kind of special challenges or anything like that. You just set your own goals for the week and read. So I had in my TBR video picked out like seven books. And I said it was pretty unlikely that I was actually going to um, get all of those read. And it turned out that I did not get all of those read, but I'm pretty pleased with what I did do. So I'm going to tell you all about it. The first thing on my TBR was the book that I was currently reading at the start of the readathon, and that is The Trip to Echo Spring on Writers and Drinking by Olivia Lang. And I was hoping to finish this. I did not finish this, but I did read an additional 100 pages of it, which for me in a nonfiction book is pretty good. I'm not upset about that at all. Um, so this is about six um, male American writers. And I'll probably talk about this when I wrap this book up. But she does mention, she does have an explanation for why she only talks about male authors. Um, and it has to do sort of with her personal life. So, um... Anyway, it chronicles their relationship with alcohol. It's also kind of partially a memoir as Olivia Lang travels across the U.S. to the places where these writers lived and worked um, to kind of get a feel for their lives and their situations. I'm really enjoying this. Um, as far as nonfiction goes, it's a really easy read. I know some people, and me included for a while, are kind of intimidated by nonfiction because it all seems very dense and heavy. And I've found in the last couple of years since I've started reading more nonfiction that that is not at all always the case. It is sometimes, but usually you can definitely find things that are not like that at all. Um, so yeah, I am very much enjoying this. And like I said, I got about a hundred pages more into this. The next thing that I finished was The Golden Compass, also known as Northern Lights, by Philip Pullman. I had already started listening to this on audiobook before the readathon started, and I really wanted to finish it, so I did do that. Um, this is the first book in the His Dark Materials trilogy, which is, of course, a very famous kind of middle grade slash YA fantasy series. It was good. I So for the last few years, I've been trying to get to some of the, like, um, children's books including children's classics and more popular um, children's series that I kind of missed out on as a child that I just didn't read when I was younger. And so I've read things like The Chronicles of Narnia and Pippi Longstocking and stuff like that. And this was on my list. And like so many of those other books, I just feel like I came to it a little too late. Like I don't, I feel like so many people love the series because they have like happy childhood memories associated with it or because it brought them so much joy in their childhood. And for me, I don't have that kind of um, time and place association with the books. So while I very much enjoyed the story, and I will say that the full cast audiobook narration is fantastic, um, I didn't love it as much as I really wanted to. I really wanted to love these books. I know so many people love them and they're so dear to so many people. But I ended up giving it three stars. The next book I finished I read in just one evening and that is The Hen Who Dreamed She Could Fly. This is by Sunmi Wang. I also gave this three stars. This was really great. Um, this has been touted kind of as the Korean Charlotte's Web. So Sunmi Wang is Korean. And this is a story of a hen who is an egg laying hen and she lives in a chicken coop on a farm. And um, one day she gets really sick and she can't lay eggs anymore. And they throw her out basically to die because what use is she now? They can't eat her and she can't make eggs. And she survives and kind of tries to make it on her own without the assistance of any other animals. Um, some other really cool things happen. This was, like I said, it was really cute. It um, is definitely a bit satirical. It is definitely kind of a moral tale about family and where we belong. 
It's very allegorical. If you're a fan of George Orwell's Animal Farm, I think that you would really enjoy this. And I ended up giving this three stars. It was a very charming read. Um, it's also got some illustrations for the chapter headings, which I found were really fun. And those are done by, I know who those are done by, uh, Nomiko. And then this was also, you should know, translated from Korean by Chi Young Kim. Um, so yeah, I like the chapter openings have very nice illustrations. And that is all I have to say about that. Also during Mato Books, I finished reading The Slow Regard of Silent Things by Patrick Rothfuss. This is book number 2.5, according to Goodreads, of the King Curler Chronicles. So, um, for those of you who watched my December wrap-up or my favorite books of 2015 video, I recently finished book two of the King Killer Chronicles. King, that's so hard to say. <laughs> King Killer Chronicles, which was the Wise Man's Fear, and I really enjoyed that. And I was looking for more, and of course, book three is not out yet. Um, but this is kind of an intermediary book, and Patrick Rothfuss is so funny. In the introduction to this book, he's like, you might not want to buy this. Um, if you have not read the Name of the Wind at least, though I recommend reading The Name of the Wind book one and The Wise Man's Fear book two before you get to this because there are some nods to The Wise Man's Fear in it, but you will understand it if you've read book one. Um, this is the story of a character introduced in book one called Ari, and she's kind of a strange character who lives in these like forgotten tunnels underneath this university for magic, um, and she's a bit bizarre and a little strange. Um, and I just, I loved this. You're right inside of Ari's head during this book, and she is a very unreliable na narrator, but I think she's just fantastic, and I was very, very thrilled to read this. It's very whimsical and just beautifully done. Uh, Patrick Rothfuss apparently just started writing this for his own sake to kind of expand on Ari's backstory. He wasn't planning on publishing it, and he did publish it, and for that I am very grateful. So if you are at all interested in the King Curler Chronicles, this is something to keep in mind. I also read the graphic novel I had planned, which is the second volume of Sweet Tooth. This one is called In Captivity. This is by Jeff Lemire, and I read the first volume quite a few months ago and really loved it. This is set in a um, post-pandemic world where many people have gotten very sick, um, you know, as people do in these type of stories and um the baby the children a lot of the children that are being born after people start getting sick are part animal part human so i mean you can see them on the front they have some physical characteristics of animals it's really sad it's really sad it's really beautiful i love this art style at first i wasn't sure that i would but jeff lemire does so many cool things with his paneling I'm just, I'm thrilled. Um, I will talk about this. I'm overdue for a kind of comic wrap up, so I will definitely talk about this there. And the last thing I finished was A uh, Streetcar Named Desire by Tennessee Williams. I have never read any plays by Tennessee Williams, which is a shame because I love Southern literature and I really loved this. Because I'm reading The Trip to Echo Spring by Olivia Lang, she talks a lot about Tennessee Williams, and because I'd never read any of his work, I was like, I have to read something. Um, so I picked this one first. This is, of course, his most famous play, and I can't wait to read his others. This, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's the story of three main characters, um, Stella, Blanche, and Stella's husband, Stanley. And Blanche comes to stay with her sister, Stella, in New Orleans after kind of losing their family estate in the South, and things kind of go crazy from there. The thing that I maybe loved most about this book's book was the stage directions. Tennessee Williams writes the most beautiful stage directions that I've ever read. Like, it's insane how wonderful the stage directions are and how vivid and how he makes this world come to life. So I definitely recommend this if you've never read any Tennessee Williams and are interested. I will say that the ending is a bit of a kicker and I was spoiled for the ending because of the trip to Echo Spring. I actually already knew what happened because this book does have some spoilers in it. Um, but it didn't make it less enjoyable for me. Um, it kind of built up this atmosphere of dread because <laughs> it doesn't end well for everyone. So 
That is all I'm going to say. I'm not going to spoil you any further, but I will say that this was absolutely fabulous. I ended up giving this four stars. The other book I was thinking about reading was A Wild Swan and Other Stories by Michael Cunningham. I finally picked this up last night. I read 10 pages and then I passed out. <laughs> so I did not get to this, but I am really enjoying it so far. Um, it's pretty cool. So I have only read like one story. They're really short fairy tales, um, and they are, I didn't know this when I bought it, are really beautifully illustrated. Um, the illustrations are by Yuko Shimizu, and I think that Yuko Shimizu also did the um, cover design, which is outstanding. Again, like I said, I'm filming on my computer, so I don't know how much of this is going to be picked up, but I'm looking forward to reading this. So this is something I'm currently reading. I'm also currently reading the trip to Echo Springs still. And then I just started listening to Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban is my audiobook. I'm working my way back through the Harry Potter books on audiobook because I've, I think I listened to a couple of them on audiobook when I was younger, but I, as an adult, have never listened to them. And I'm really excited to be doing that. Um, let me know if you participated in the readathon. I would be thrilled to hear about it. Sorry if this ramp up is kind of long. I have a lot to say. And I will be back soon. Bye y'all.